Shalom from Jerusalem. My name is Shani Ferguson, and I will be reading this month's Maos Israel report. It's not an easy one if you know what's going on. Um, this has been the most difficult time for Israel since her birth. Some people are describing this as Israel's second independence war. So I'm going to be reading this unusual Maos Israel report, unusual in the fact that it has a lot of photos. I encourage you to look them up online at maosisrael.org. The article is called Black Sabbath, which is what everyone in Israel calls the 7th of October, 2023. HaShabbat HaShchorah. I will read and try to describe the photos as much as possible so that if you are only able to access the audio version of this article, you will at least understand a little bit. Black Sabbath by Shani Ferguson. The fact that October 7th is considered the worst day in Israel's modern history, but not in her entire history, should explain a lot about what we are dealing with in Israel. For the past 40 years, the Ma'oz Israel report has gone to print mid-month so that it arrives in people's homes on the first of the month. But I sit here mid-month a week after this war began, and I remain at a loss for words. I am no stranger to war. This is my fourth war in Israel, not counting the military operations that happen seemingly every year or two. I grew up with TV commercials, teaching me never to approach a suspicious object like an abandoned bag because it could be a bomb. Code red sirens indicating rockets from Gaza or Lebanon or Iraq are second nature to me. This time was different. This time, it hurt deeply. My people weren't just killed. They weren't even just murdered. They were butchered. They were tortured and then piled up and burned alive. And if they were really unlucky, they survived and were among the more than 200 kidnapped into Gaza. I haven't spoken to a single Israeli, Jew or Arab, who doesn't know someone with a horror story from this war and it's only just begun. I thought long and hard about how to pass on this experience with words without passing on the trauma my entire country is going through, and I don't know how. So we have agonizingly sifted through countless photos, sparing you the worst and wishing we could show you more. If a picture is worth a thousand words, the images filmed and photographed in Israel since Saturday the 7th are a million screams of a nation pleading to be allowed to defend itself, of Israeli villages that no longer exist, of family lines that were completely wiped out, and of a history lesson the world convinced itself they had learned. The first caption is Israeli soldiers fight off more than 1,500 Hamas terrorists and put out fires Hamas set to hundreds of village homes in southern Israel in a surprise attack on October 7th. More than 1,400 men, women, and children were savagely murdered, and over 200 remain captured in Gaza. The second image is a map of all of Israel, where you can see where Hezbollah rockets in northern Israel have struck so far, and where Hamas rockets have landed in Israel so far. You can also see Israeli strikes in the Gaza Strip. Later on, we also have an image of where rockets fired from Gaza fell into Gaza, at least 450 of them within the first couple of weeks. The next caption is of trained civilian volunteers from Zaka gathering the bodies of murdered Israeli families amidst the wreckage of their bombed and burnt homes you see a structure that is scorched from the outside and piles of body bags stacked to be carried off by a four-wheeler. The third caption is of an Israeli couple, and it reads, Israeli singer Shaili and her one-month-old baby survived 27 hours of horror. The baby didn't eat for 27 hours during this time. She mourned twice. Shyly first mourned the loss of her husband, who fought to buy them time to escape. And second, when she was notified that his extracted sperm would not 
give her the three children they dreamed of having because her husband's body had laid too long in the sun. The next caption is called A Father's Agony. When a father hears that his eight-year-old daughter who had spent the night at a friend's house in southern Israel is among the dead. Yes, he responded with a smile and an agony-filled shout of joy. I feared what would happen to her if she was taken into Gaza. Death was a blessing. The next caption is of people sleeping on the floor of a plane. An El Al flight from Bangkok did not have enough seats for all the Israelis returning to fight in the war. After everyone was seated, flight attendants filled every square inch of the floor space with more people. Yossi Taguri, who posted this photo on X, which is now Twitter, noted, While some countries have issues and make rules to stop men from getting out in war times in Israel, we have issues getting everyone in fast enough to fight. The next caption is of a family of five, a mother, father, two teen boys, and a teenage girl. All five of the Coots family were initially listed among the missing until they were eventually discovered murdered in their home, huddled on a bed, still embracing. The next caption, IDF chief talks to Air Force unit before a mission. You see the plane in the background and the pilots with their faces blurred and other members of the Air Force surrounding. We are all angry, he says, but we must not fight from our rage. We will fight like lions, but we must not become animals like they are. We must remain human. The next image is from Israel's northern border. Metula, a city that sits directly on the Israel-Lebanon border, was declared a closed military zone and nearby cities were evacuated as the IDF manages the threat of a second war front in Lebanon with Hezbollah. And you can see a neighborhood with homes and tanks going down the main street. The next photo shows Hamas members, including its leader, Yifya Sinwar, uh, walking down the street in Gaza. It was 12 years ago this October that kidnapped Israeli soldier Gilad Shalit was traded for over a thousand prisoners. One of those terrorists was Yehia Sinwar, who now heads up Hamas and this war against Israel. He is rarely, if ever, seen in public without bodyguards behind him and children in front who serve as a human shield. It should be noted that he tortured and brutally killed his own people when they disagreed with him. In fact, when he was arrested, he didn't have any Israeli Jewish blood on his hands. He had only killed Palestinians, whom he suspected had helped Israel. And in the picture you see, he has what I believe is are his two sons, but they're two young boys, and he keeps them close to him because he knows that Israel will not attack him when there are children nearby. Border closing. The next photo shows the border of Gaza with Egypt. Egypt places concrete slabs to indefinitely close the crossing from Gaza. It has since been opened to allow humanitarian trucks in and those with foreign passports out. World leaders have offered to pay Egypt to take in Gazans. But they have refused, citing the destructive nature of Gazan culture. The next photo is a map, and I'll read the caption of the next photo and then explain the actual photo. 500 Palestinians were said to have been killed when a rocket hit a Gaza hospital. Hamas and international media blamed Israel before any investigation took place. Riots against Israel took off around the world, and the next day Hamas, quote-unquote, retaliated by bombing an Israeli hospital, taking out the hallway next to the birthing ward. It took only hours to find footage and recorded conversation between Hamas militants to prove the explosion was caused by a failed rocket from the Islamic Jihad. The strangest twist in the story was that in the end, photos showed the rocket had dropped in the parking lot and not hit the hospital at all. But we never heard anything else about the 500 dead Palestinians. In response, the Israeli ambassador to India tweeted, 
This ability of the Palestinians to invade 30 Jewish communities, slaughter 1,400 Israelis, kidnap more than 200, shoot 7,000 rockets at Israeli civilians, and still play the victim is amazing. And the photo is of the IDF spokesman showing a map of over 450 rockets that were fired from within Gaza, landing in Gaza as part of Israel's war with the international media to prove that not only did it not commit this atrocity, but it never even happened. The next photo is of an apartment building with four flags hanging. Israeli parents display the four flags of the military units their four children are serving in during the war. The next photo is of a kindergarten party. Just a few months ago, this picture was taken in kibbutz near Oz at a kindergarten celebration. Every person in this photo was either injured, murdered, or kidnapped. And that kindergarten no longer exists. This is a personal story of one of the people involved in recouping and processing the bodies. It is hard to listen to, and I encourage not to have children in the room. We didn't post anything graphic, but it's still heavy to hear the personal story of someone who was in the front lines of cleaning up the mess that Hamas made. We wrestled long and hard with how much to share about the events of Saturday, October 7th. Not too much to give you nightmares and not too little because you must realize the severity of what happened. The world will push back, but we have no choice. Hamas can no longer be allowed to exist on our border. And this is the translation of a testimony by IDF Reserve Soldier Yosef Davidson, posted on Facebook. Shura Military Base, Israel, Sunday morning, October 8th. We arrive at the base to the stench of death. It's the smell of a concentration camp. We are briefed and given protective clothing to get to work. I've trained for years to process conditions of all kinds of victims' remains. Nothing prepares me for this horror that will be etched in my memory forever. This is not a baptism of fire. This is a headlong dive into the inferno. A huge refrigerated truck arrives with a chocolate milk ad on the side, the kind we drank when we were kids. Then a tsunami stench of death hits us. We don't think, we just act. The guy closest to the door numbly picks up body bag after body bag, shouting to his friends from below, Careful, this is the head. Here are the legs. Body after body. It's never ending. Forty bodies in the first truck, and then truck after truck. One truck I will never forget. The truck from Kibbutz near Oz. A long truck full of people whose bodies were gathered by our people while terrorists were still out there, while rockets were still being fired overhead. Whole families in sheets and carpets from their own homes. I get into the truck and see a little foot of a four-year-old girl. It's so sweet. I can't digest what I'm seeing. I pick her up slowly, being careful with her head, being careful as I pick up her lifeless body. The blanket slips off, and the peaceful face of an angel emerges from the inside, a toddler still in her Mickey Mouse nightgown. I take her down slowly and shout, Four-year-old girl, be careful. Be careful of her head. Everyone is careful. Everyone does everything with the fear of God. This is a nightmare, a horror movie. Then comes her brother, a two-year-old boy with beautiful blonde hair, then her sister, and we pull out their father, handsome and big man. We probably also pulled out the mother, but I couldn't tell. We pulled out the bodies of foreigners and locals who still had weapons and ammunition strapped to them, Our hearts are broken and crushed. Any second the heart could crumble, but we must continue. It doesn't end ten trucks like this. We go to sleep at 5 a.m. in the morning. We just collapse on the sidewalk outside because who cares where we lie? 
Our bodies are shaking and our eyes won't close. They're so swollen from tears. And that was just the first day. At 7 a.m., we get up and go again. Horror follows horror. Penetrating injuries with hatchet knives, smashed and mangled heads from hammers, faces and bodies with gashes burned into them, girls with nail polish that matches their clothes with a stench that overwhelms the senses. We try everything to block the smell, and nothing helps. We feel the angel of death hovering in the air. Each day, the condition of the next truckload of corpses gets worse. They turn blue or white, and their skin begins to peel. It's hard to comprehend who and what we are seeing. Some people are completely blackened. It's impossible to distinguish whether it's a man or a woman. Tissue and skin flake off, and they stick to our gloves. How do we handle the remains so we can bring back as much of them to their families who are crying out from the core of their being, waiting for that identifiable piece that will confirm to them that this body was their loved one? Professionals among us who have said they've seen everything before, they fall apart, wailing from the depths of their soul, running outside to vomit. Our nation is witnessing horrors we only saw in dark and evil days of old. We didn't think we'd come to this again, and yet here we are. But I will say something in the midst of this horror. The people of Israel live. We will get through this and raise our head high again. And there's a photo of IDF for service, Yosef Davidson, outside of the refrigerated truck, usually used to transport chocolate milk. Each truck bought some 40 corpses from the massacre to be identified, and the photo next to it is the inside of the truck, full of body bags. And the next photo is the wreckage left in one of the children's rooms from the massacre in kibbutz near Oz. There's a bunk bed, and the entire bottom bunk is stained with blood. Thank you for listening all the way to the end. Until next time, I'm Shani Ferguson from Jerusalem.